to the Lord in prayer today. We're going to pray for all those that are away today. Amen. Sick once again with a sore throat and the flu and the cold. I, my phone was blowing up with texts. I can't be here because I got the flu. And I, don't want to, I don't want to spread the cold and so on and so forth. But a special prayer request today. We want to pray for the elder, for the bustard. He's been in the hospital for about three days with the pain in his pancreas. He's had this before. So we want to pray today that God would heal him in the name of Jesus, right? We're not only going to pray that God touches him, we're going to pray that God heals him, Amen. takes his pain away, and, and heals his pancreas, whatever it may be, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Brother Tim, pray today in Jesus. Now, get the right guy, the guy in the front seat with that brother Tim. Hallelujah, let's pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Your Lord, we just lift up your, your name, your Lord, today. We just ask that you would heal where the healings are needed, Lord, and bless the people here today. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because, God, you are the healer. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, because you are the healer. There's no shadow, there's no doubt. There's no fear, there's no doubt, there's no unbelief because you are the healer. I lose the word of faith, the gift of faith, and the moving of faith in this house. I lose the operation of the signs and gifts of God. Let there be miracle signs and wonders in this house in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Before you're seated today, are you feeling what I'm feeling today? Amen. Come on, let's say, are you feeling what I'm feeling in this place today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated today for a moment. As we came early today to pray, what a powerful time of prayer. I invite everybody on Sunday. I invite every servant. Everybody come early to pray. What a powerful time of prayer we had here this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to ask Brother Kim to come real quick as we receive the tithe and the offering. Amen. God bless you today as you return your tithe and offering is as unto the Lord. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Brother Kim, you pray. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> oh, I feel the Holy Ghost today. Praise God. We just want to make a few announcements. Once again, we welcome everybody in the building. And we welcome everybody, all of our friends that's listening on Facebook Live. God bless you today in Jesus' name. I want to make a few announcements today as Brother Cooper catches up. Amen. He's a little sidetracked there, but that's all right. Our announcements. Here we go. Oh, be lifted up. Here we go. Amen. We're on our last week of our 40-day <clears throat> A time of prayer and fasting. We've got a sign up chart in the back. And all you got to do is just put a little sticky thingy dingy on the field or the day that you want to fast. I appreciate those that have been praying and fasting and seeking the face of God. Probably that's why there's such a presence of God in this place today in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's remember tomorrow night is prayer at 6 o'clock. Always come. I invite everybody to come. Please come to the house of the Lord. We're having some absolute Powerful, powerful, powerful prayer times here on Monday night. Then on Tuesday morning is the kids' uh, play group here at uh, 10 o'clock. Amen. And uh, Jamie will be running this herself because Kelly and uh, Curtis and their two kids have been sick now for about a week or over a week. They're trying to get to Jamaica this week on holiday, so they better get feeling good. They're listening online. You guys got to get feeling good real fast. Amen. Hello. So Jamie will be running this herself. And then tomorrow, uh, excuse me, Tuesday night is our ladies meeting. I shouldn't say our ladies meeting, your ladies meeting. I, you, understand what I, there was a, you understand what I said? 
There's a ladies' meeting going on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. They're going to talk about vision. They're going to talk about the uh, Christmas banquet, the Christmas outreach, and all of those things. So all you ladies, please come. Revival by Design is Wednesday night at 7. It's a powerful time, Sister Sherry's doing an awesome job in leading and teaching this. Come early for prayer at 6 o'clock. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thursday is always prayer and fasting. Amen. We talk about prayer and fasting a lot around this church. Amen. So we're going to do more than talk about it. We're going to practice it. All right. Amen. Thursday, we're going to practice prayer and fasting. Friday night as young adults. We had a great time here last Friday night as we played, played uh, Bible trivia. We proved to everybody how smart we were. You thought I was going to say the other one. We proved to everybody how smart we were. Amen. In Jesus' name. This Friday night, Carolyn is going to be speaking to us. Amen. In Jesus' name. Come on now. Hallelujah. She didn't seem very excited when I said that. Uh, anyway, she's teaching this Friday night. Yeah, she, she wasn't listening. It's all right. I know what it's like to preach and know my business. It's all right. Amen. In Jesus' name. Ladies' breakfast going on. When is this going on? The 11th. The 11th. That's this Saturday. It's coming up, is it? At Rebecca's house. She'll give me the address. Maybe it's on there. Anyway, ladies, breakfast at 9 o'clock at Rebecca's home. All you ladies, all you ladies, all right? Breakfast, Saturday at 9 o'clock. Next Sunday is going to be 1030. That's for everybody. Amen. Everything else seems to be with the ladies. But next Sunday morning, everybody can come. Hallelujah. 1030, we're going to have a powerful, powerful time in the house of the Lord. All those that get the flu and the... All these uh, colds, they'll be all over. We'll all be in the house of the Lord. But you know what? I'm expecting a move of the Holy Ghost today. Come on, I'm expecting a move of the Holy Ghost today. Come on, church. Come on. Lord. Come on. I'm expecting a move of the Holy Ghost today. Hallelujah. Christmas is coming up. What's going on? December the 19th. All right. December the 19th is banquet. It's right after service. So we're going to have our Sunday morning service. Then we're going to, we're going to pray. We're going to sing. We're going to preach. We're going to fellowship. And we're going to have a Christmas bank. You can see my wife and all of what's going on. And then on the 24th, we'll have a uh, Christmas Eve service here about 6 o'clock that evening, which is on a Friday night. We're just going to continue on over the, over the holidays and over Christmas. The services will all be the same. Amen. We're just going to continue on. Amen. In Jesus' name. Praise God. All other services remain the same. I don't like that. All the services remain the same. The same time. I don't want any service to be the same. Come on. I don't know what you're trying to say. The service is going to be the same time. I don't want any service to be the same. Come on. How many want service to be old, dead, old, dry? I don't want I want every service to be different. Hallelujah. I want to come to the... I don't want to be able to predict what's going to happen in the service. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Well, let's stand together today in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I think it would only be fitting and polite that we lifted our hands one more time unto God. Come on, I think the church needs to give Him praise in this house right now. I feel like God is going to do something so awesome. Amen. Before this service is true. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, church. I feel the Holy Ghost of God in this place. Oh, I feel that. Oh, my God. I feel something powerful happening in this place. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen, Cooper, I'm going to ask you to take me down just a hair. Amen, in Jesus' name. I want us to read the Word of God today. Turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter number 16. Matthew, chapter 16. And we will read two or three verses there. Then we're going to go to the Gospel of St. John, chapter number 21. Oh my God, I feel the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. I believe God is going to do something powerful in this place. I believe people are going to be healed before this service is out. I believe people are going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. You visitors and new folk, you don't have to be in the service for hundred years to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You only have to be in His presence about two seconds. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Matthew chapter number 16. And we will commence reading in verse number 16. Now I want you to notice very close the words here. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ the Son of the living God. Notice, 
Simon Peter answered and said. Verse number 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, or unto Peter, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. Blessed art thou, Simon Barmi, son, son of Jonah. Now he's not referring to Jonah of the Old Testament. He's just referring to Peter's father's name. He calls him Simon Barjona. Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. The gates of hell should not prevail against it. 16, Simon Peter. 17, Simon Barjona. 18, thou art Peter. You can keep your hand in that chapter, but scoot over to John chapter 21. Verse number one, the gospel of St. John, chapter number 21 and verse number one, 21 and one of John, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the sea of Tiberias and on this wise showed he himself. Notice, please, there were together Simon Peter or Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, and Nathaniel of Cain of Galilee, the two sons of Zebedee, which are James and John, and two other disciples. I want you to notice this is after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, John 21, 3, Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth, and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. Verse number 15 of the same chapter. John 21, 15. So when they had dined, Jesus saith unto Simon Peter, or to Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith unto him the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Be my sheep. 17. <clears throat> he saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? God bless you today. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. From Matthew chapter 16, 16, 18. In John 21, 1 to 3, 15 and 17, I want to preach to us on this subject. It's a very simple subject, but very powerful. I'm not going back fishing. I am not going back fishing. Now the Bible says in John, excuse me, in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8, that all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. I say that to all the fishermen and hunters. Because if you ever want to get somebody to stretch the truth, get them to tell you a hunting or a fishing story. <laughs> Do you ever notice, ladies and gentlemen, that it's always the biggest buck or the biggest fish that always did what? He got away. I mean, you can bring home a, a 10 point buck or a 30 pound salmon. And the hunter and the fisherman will say, but you should have seen the one that got away. As if the 10-point buck and the 30-pound salmon wasn't big enough. You ever notice? So if you ever want to challenge somebody on the truth, just talk to those men that love to hunt and fish. It's always the salmon that got away that was the biggest. Come on now. It was always the buck that got away that was always the biggest and the greatest. Amen? But from this story, I want to show you something. In Matthew chapter number 4, in Mark chapter 1, and Luke chapter 5, the Bible says this, that Jesus Christ has began his ministry, and the Bible says that Jesus passes by the Sea of Galilee. And while, he's church, while church he's passing by the sea, the scripture says he sees Peter and his brother, Jan, uh, brother Andrew casting or mending their nets, for they were fishermen. And the scripture says that Jesus said, Come and 
follow me. Now Matthew says it like this, that they left their nets and followed Jesus. Mark says they forsook their nets and followed Jesus. But Luke says they forsook all and followed Jesus. So when they begin to follow Jesus, he literally says this, you're not going to be fishers of fish anymore. You're going to be fishers of men. Actually, he says in Matthew and Mark, come and follow me and I'll make you to become fishers of men. Luke says that it's something like this. He says, come and follow me. For henceforth, you're going to catch men. So from those portions of scripture, that's where Peter gets his calling. Matthew chapter 4. In Matthew chapter number 10, the scripture says, verse 2, that Peter was numbered with the 12. In other words, church, when uh, Jesus chose 12 apostles or disciples, whatever term you want to use, when Jesus chose 12 apostles, uh, Peter was one of those 12. Everybody say Peter. Peter. Yeah. That's dry. Everybody say Peter. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. So Peter was chosen by God in Matthew chapter 4. He's chosen as one of the 12 in Matthew chapter 10. But let's look at Matthew chapter 16. In Matthew chapter 16, 13 down through 20, he goes like this. And I quote, When Jesus passed through the upper coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples a question. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? In other words, church, Jesus asked a question and gives them the answer in the question. Who do men say that I... The son of man am. I wouldn't mind to go to that kind of a school. How about you? I mean, I wouldn't mind to go into that kind of a university. The teacher gets up on the Monday morning and said, listen, I'm going to give you a test or an exam today. But if you pay uh, special attention, the answers are in the questions. I wouldn't mind going to school like that. So Jesus asked a question and church, he gives them the answer in the question. Who have been saying that I, the son of man am? They say, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're one of the prophets. But notice, he looks at Peter and says, but Peter, who do you say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Watch this. He is referred to as Simon Peter. And then when Jesus looks at him in Matthew 16, 17, he calls him, he says, listen, you're no longer going to be called Simon Barjona. You will not be referred to anymore as Simon Barjona, Simon, son of Jonas. So if you begin to study the scripture, verse number 18, it says, Thou art Peter. Everybody say Peter. Peter. That's right. Everybody say Peter. Peter. He's not going to be referred to as Simon Barjona. He's going to be referred to from that day onward as Peter. So as you begin to study, now you stick with me today, church, as I set the foundation of this message. As you begin to study the scriptures, the, the holy word of God, you're going to find he will be referred to from Matthew 16 and 18 as Peter until John 21 when Jesus refers to him again as Simon, son of Jonas. He made what I said. When Jesus said you're going to be called Peter, nowhere in the scripture did Jesus ever refer to him again as Simon, son of Jonas until John chapter 21 and verse number 15. I'm going to show you why. So as we begin to study Peter's life, the church Peter's life was a life of ups and downs, how many knows today, saints of God, that life seemingly is just days of ups and downs? Come on now. You can come to church on a sunny morning and you can feel the presence and the power of God as we're feeling it here today. And you can feel the hoop of bubbies and you just rub it and love you. You know, you feel it. Come on, I said you feel it. And you don't get to the car. The car won't start. The tire is flat and you're out of gas. And there's a guy beside just telling you off. You talk about life being a life. I was ups and downs. Well, those are just little small expressions of, of what life is. So when you begin to study Peter's life, you'll find he's a, it's a life of ups and downs. I mean, he's no longer, Matthew 16, 18, Jesus gives him the keys of the kingdom. 
And it's about four verses later that Jesus calls him Satan. You hear what I said? He says, Peter, here's the keys of the kingdom. And four or five verses later, he says, get thee behind me, Satan. Can you imagine if we were in this church today and the preacher called you Satan? Close it down. You're out the door. You ain't never coming back to this church. And somebody asked you next week, how come you didn't come back? And you said, the preacher called me Satan. Jesus calls Peter in Matthew 16, Satan. Then you'll follow him a few days later, I guess about three years later. And you'll find that Jesus is in the garden praying. And there's a high priest servant comes up by the name of Makos. And the scripture says, Peter takes out his sword and cuts off his ear. Peter is kind of a guy that needs anger management. He really is. I mean, you come to take away his Christ, he'll pull out his sword and he'll chop off your ear. He's a guy that will fly off the handle and stick into the wall any place, any time of the day. Anybody ever known that kind of a person? Anybody ever know somebody that's kind of bipolar? They may be as sweet as pie one minute and, and, and rip your head off the next. Nobody. They're all back east, man. They're all back east. All those my, my poor people are back east. Anybody ever know somebody sweet as pie? Rip your head off the next second. That's kind of like Peter. I mean, he's, he, 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 he's a guy that he's going to go everywhere. He's going to go to death with Christ. And all of a sudden, he flies off the handle, cuts off the guy's ear. Jesus said before the rooster crows three times, you'll not only deny me once, twice, but three times. Peter said, no, sir, you can count me in. I'll never deny you. How many knows that Peter sold him out? Not once, not twice, but three times. This Peter, so here, here's this guy. He's a guy that's been called by Jesus to be a fisher of men. He's a guy that has the keys to the kingdom. He's a guy that's supposed to be this and that. But all of a sudden, Jesus Christ is crucified on Golgotha's hill. And Jesus Christ is placed, as it were, in the borrowed tomb. And Jesus Christ rose from the dead on the third day. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we pick up the word of God <clears throat> to John chapter 21. Everybody say John chapter 21. John. Everybody say Peter. Peter. Everybody say Peter. Peter. Everybody say Simon, son of Jonas. Simon. Now, Simon, son of Jonas was not referred to anymore from Matthew 16 and 18. Even though Peter had a life of ups and downs and fears and faults and failures, Jesus never one time pointed his finger at Peter and said, Simon, son of Jonas, ever again. I mean, he sold him out. He cut off a high priest ear. He was a kind of a temper tantrum type of a person. But Jesus Christ never referred to Peter again as Simon, son of Jonas. Until, everybody said until. until. In John chapter 21, the first three verses, the Bible says they're at the Sea of Tiberias. And the scripture says in verse 2 that there's seven disciples there, including Peter. And all of a sudden, Peter says, hey guys, I go fishing. Everybody said he's going fishing. He's going fishing. Oh, we're dry. Everybody said we're going fishing. We're going fishing. Peter said, I think I'll go fishing. And the other disciple said, I guess what? I'll go with you. But as you begin to study this story, in verse number 3 it says, Peter said, I go fishing. And in verse 3 says, they entered into a ship. i got to ask you a question. Whose ship was it? Luke chapter 5 and verse 3 says, it was Peter's ship. John chapter 21 and 7, it says, that Peter put this fisherman's coat around about him. I asked you the question, whose coat was it? And the answer is, it was Peter's coat. Yeah. So when I began to study this story, and I began to follow this guy by the name of Peter, it seems like he kept the boat around, and it looked like he kept the coat around, just in case. Didn't lose you, right? Everybody said, I'm okay. I'm okay. I was dry. Everybody said, I'm really okay. I'm really okay. The Bible says he entered into a ship, and the Bible says he put his coat around about him. Once again, the scripture, I asked you the question, whose ship was it? Luke 5, 3 says it was Peter's. I asked you whose coat was it? John 21, 6 and 7 says it was Peter's. Once again, it looked like Peter, even though the Bible says he said, I will forsake all and follow you. It looks like the coat and the ship seemingly was in the back of his mind just in case this Jesus doesn't work out. Hold on now, this is going to get better. Now let's just detour for a second, church. 
I'm going to change somebody's life today through the anointing and through the word of God. Peter said, I go a fishing. Nowhere from Matthew chapter 4 until John 21 did Peter ever say that. Nowhere from Matthew chapter 16 to verse 18 when Jesus said in 17, excuse me, when he called him Simon son of Jonas. Peter was never referred to that again until he said, I go a fishing. Hold on, this is going to get good. Let's just detour for a sec. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 19, 19 to 21, the Bible says, I've only been preaching 11 minutes. Does it seem longer than that? I'm so hyper that sometimes I feel like I'm, I've preached two hours and only 20 minutes. But in 1 Kings 19, 19 through 21, the Bible says that the prophet Elijah passes by a guy's field by the name of Shaphat, and his son by the name of Elisha was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen, and he with the 12. And the Bible says that Elijah said unto the young man, Elisha, come and follow me. And the Bible says that Elisha took the instruments of plowing and broke them in pieces. And the Bible says he set the instruments of plowing on fire. And the Bible says he boiled the oxen on the heat of the fire that was produced, as it were, by the instruments of plowing. Elisha destroyed, as it were, the instruments of plowing, and he boiled the oxen. Why? Because in Elisha's life, there was never ever going to be something to go back to just in case that Elijah didn't work out. Amen. In other words, I got a feeling of it. In other words, in the life as it were of Elisha, there was never going to be, and I gotta say this, a plan B. Plan A was going to be the ultimate. Following Elijah was going to be the all in all. He was never going back to plowing. He was never going back to the oxen. He was never going back to the instruments thereof. He burned them with fire and boiled the oxen as it were. Why? There was never going to be a just in case. Come on, church. There was never going to be anything that Elisha could go back to. It was always going to be following Elijah. I read this portion of scripture in your hearing today. It's found in Mark chapter number 10 and verse number 28. Then Peter, notice, everybody say Peter. Peter. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. Everybody said, Peter said, we have left all. We have left all. Verse 29, and Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that has left house, brother and sisters, father, mother, wife, children or lands for my sake, that I will not return on him a hundredfold. Peter said, I have left all. Everybody say Peter. Peter. And he said, I have left all. Now I want you to stay with me today. I'm giving you a bunch of scriptures. But I'm going to change somebody's life today in Jesus' name. The Bible says in Luke chapter 9, 57 through 62, there's a guy that came to Jesus and said, Jesus, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. Everybody said, I will follow thee. Absolutely. The guy said, I will follow thee. And then the guy says, well, let me go back first and uh, bury my father. Then he said, let me go back and bid them farewell that was at my house. Let me bury my father. I mean, that's a respected thing to do, church. Let me bid farewell to those that are at the house. And Jesus looked at him and said, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Who was in this house last Sunday? Who, who, who's here today last Sunday? What did I preach about? I preached about Lot's wife, right? Lot's wife. What happened to her? What is the brother? She looked, she looked back. And then what happened to her? What? She became a pillar of salt. Hear me, church, in the Holy Ghost today. Lot's wife did not commit adultery. Lot's wife did not murder somebody. Lot's wife did not rob the bank. All she did, church, was look back. And the Bible literally says she became a pillar of salt. We that are in this building today, if we look back, we will not become a pillar of salt, as it were. But he said, any man putting his hand to the plow and looking back is not fit 
for the kingdom of God. There was another scripture that I used that was found in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11, and verse number 15. He said, if they had been mindful of the country from which they came out, they would have had opportunity to return. Paul said in Philippians 3, 13, this one thing, church, everybody say one thing. One thing. One thing. One thing. This one thing I do. Forgetting the things that are behind, forgetting the things that are, I don't I feel it on me now. He says, forgetting the things that are behind, I press for the mark of the prize of the high calling. I told this here last week, and I'll repeat it on purpose. If your mind remains full of the place you came out of, you are going to return. If you keep your mind full of old friends and drug habits and alcoholism and so on and so forth, if your mind becomes full of that, you will return to that. But Paul said, forgetting, forgetting the things, oh my God, today, forgetting the things that are behind, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Let me get to my text then, all right? Everybody said you're preaching long. No, don't say that. I've only been preaching 19 minutes. Watch this. I say a lot in 19 minutes, all right? I give you a thousand scriptures already in 19 minutes. <laughs> he says, Simon Barjona, never again. Church, never again. Come on, church, never again. Until Peter said, I go fishing. So when he goes back fishing, excuse me, church, when he goes back, as it were, to his old habits, when he gets back to his old ways, when he gets back to his old places, oh my God, help me, when he goes back to his old, to his old, to his old, let me just say it, when Peter goes back to his old, to his old, to his old, anybody want to put a word in there? Come on. When he gets back to the car, uh, I can say a word, but I'm just going to get you, get, get, I'm going to get you to get it. Does that make sense? When he gets back to his old, when he goes back, church, hear me today, in the spirit, when Peter said, I go back fishing, Jesus said, that's okay, go ahead. And Peter goes back fishing. And the scripture says he gets into a ship. It's Peter's ship. And the Bible says he puts a coat on it. It's Peter's coat. Come on now. They fish all night. Caught what? Zero. Jesus comes and says, put your net on the right side. Not left or right, but right and wrong side. Put your net on the right side. They pulled out the net. There was 153 fish. <clears throat> Jesus said, come and dine. Oh my God, help me. Jesus said, come and dine. Yeah. Everybody said, come and dine. Come and dine. Oh, come and dine. The pastor called it, come and dine. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the, the Bible literally says in the Hebrew translation, they sit down and they eat. The other translation said, they had breakfast. Everybody say breakfast. breakfast. Everybody said it's important. important. Everybody said, you should try it, Terry, sometime. It's important. Oh. Breakfast is important, they say. Here it is. So after they had eaten breakfast, all of a sudden, Jesus looks at Simon Peter and said, Simon, son of Jonas, uh-oh, uh-oh, church, uh-oh, 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 hear me what I said. Jesus Christ looks at Peter and says, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Now what, now I'm going to give you some good English. What was the these? Is that good English? What was the these? Well, maybe the these is the fish. Lovest thou me more than these? Or maybe the these were the other disciples. Lovest thou me more than these? Nonetheless, whatever the these were, that's not the issue. The issue is Jesus looks at Peter and says, Simon, son of Jonas. He never called them that from Matthew 16, 18. He always referred to him as Peter or Simon Peter. But when Peter went back to his old, he got his own name back. Right. Come on, I said when Peter went back to his old, he got his own nature back. Yeah. When Peter went back to his old, he got his old calling back. Yeah. Am I making sense to you now? Yeah. Come on, I said, if I, come on, I said, now, now I make sense to myself, but sometimes I don't make sense to anybody else. <laughs> I'm making sense to myself today. When Jesus said Simon Barjona in Matthew 16, 18, verses 18, excuse me, said thou art Peter. He never would call him Simon, son of Jonas, until Peter went back fishing. 
Because why? Jesus said you're not going to fish fish. You're going to be a fisher of men. But Peter said in John 21, 3, I go back fishing. He got in his old boat, bless God. Oh, come on now. He went out down to the dock, Brother Reggie. He went down to the dock in Rockville, and he got his old boat out. He went out in the back house. You know the old building out behind his house, and he, he dug out his old coat, and he kept it. Oh, come on, church. Peter kept that ship around. I said, Peter kept that old coat around just in case. But I'm in this building today, and on Facebook Live to tell us we we need to scrap the boat. We need to burn the coat. Hallelujah. Come on, I said we need to scrap that stuff. I'm not going. I'm not going back fishing. I'm going to burn the boat. I'm going to destroy the coat. I'm not getting my own name back. I don't want my own nature back. I am forgetting the things that are behind. And I'm pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> If I'm not telling you the truth today, why is there so many backsliders? Right. Why is there so many precious prodigal sons and daughters? I tell you why they went back fishing. Yeah. I said, I tell you why they got in the old boat. Mm -hmm. Am I making sense? Amen. I said, they got the old coat out. They never really did destroy the boat. I said, they never really did destroy the coat. Yeah. Come on, church. They always kept it around just in case. I, I, uh, I want to keep Sue around just in case. <laughs> the boys say, I'll keep Sue around just in case. And the ladies say, I'll keep Bill around. <laughs> I don't know who Bill is. Please don't judge me. Maybe, maybe his name is Sue. Johnny Cash is a boy named Sue. So. But I'll keep Bill around. Just in case Jesus doesn't plan out. Is anybody in the house with me today? I'll keep Sue around just in case. And Peter said, Lord, we forsook all. Really? How many verses did I give you today? Peter said, Lord, we have forsook all. Really? Peter said, Lord, I forsook all. Really, Peter? Well, if you forsook all, how come the boat was in the dock? And how come the coat was in the closet? Doesn't say that Peter said, I go fishing. They give me five days to repair the boat. Give me five or six days till I find my fisherman's call. No, church, it, it looks like to me. Now, maybe I'm reading the scripture wrong. But it looks like to me that the boat and the coat was right there. Yeah, yeah, he said, I go fishing. And then he what it says, and immediately they entered into a ship. And not only that, the other six followed them. Right. You know why? Because you don't live and die unto yourself. Your testimony, you do not live and die unto yourself. Right. You do not live and die unto yourself. Peter went fishing and he took the other six with him. Yeah. Am I making sense at all? Yeah. Peter said, I'm going fishing. And Jesus said, that's fine. And then the next time that, Jesus, excuse me, that Peter sees Jesus, guess what? Simon, son of Jonas. It must have shocked Peter. Come on. Peter, you got your own name back. How you feeling? Peter, you got your old nature back. Why? Because you went back fishing, man. You went back to your old habits. You went back to your old ways. You went back to your old boat. You went back to your old coat. But you told me you'd follow me all the days of your life. You said you'd forsake everything. But well, boy, the coat and the boat was close. Listen, churches, I close. You girls come back to the instrument. I'll close with this. I preached 28 minutes. Does that seem long? Sometimes it seems long to me. Well, it doesn't seem like I preach long, but sometimes I, I think the people think that I'm preaching long. It's like, you know, <laughs> you don't preach anymore. Like, you know, it's kind of sure. Listen, when God brought Israel out of Egypt, that was never a problem. The problem always remained that he couldn't get Egypt out of Israel. He could get Israel out of Egypt at the snap of his finger. But the minute he brings them out of Egypt, you know what they would say? I love the onions and the garlic and the leeks in Egypt. Now if I had been back in those days, I would have put the brain tester on, on Israel. God said, I'm taking you to a land that flows with milk and honey. 
And they said, we prefer to eat the onions in Egypt. He said, I'm taking you, you to a land that you've never seen before. And they said, we prefer to be under Pharaoh's control. We prefer the leeks and the onions and the garlics. We prefer the whip of the taskmaster, Pharaoh in Egypt. They must have lost their mind. And all through the life of the people of God, in the wilderness experience, they would continue to say, it would have been better if we stayed in Egypt. Have you lost your mind? I would have asked Israel, have you lost your mind? God's taken you to Canaan, flowing with milk and honey, and all you can talk about is going back to Egypt. Isn't it funny? He could get Israel out of Egypt, but he couldn't get Egypt out of Israel. And it seems like that's the way in the life of some people. They can never get that out of their mind. They can never get Egypt out of their mind. They can never get the boat and the coat out of their mind. But you know what I think, church, in this house today, and those that are listening on Facebook Live, you know what I think? I think we need to erase the thought that I'm going back fishing out of our minds. Praise God. Because if you hang around your boat and coat, you will go back fishing. Come on. Sounds like a poacher, right? I'll never shoot a deer out of season again. But I should go throw the gun away. Because every time you get that pickup, that rifle, back in the day we used to be able to put the rifle, remember Brother Smith behind the, 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 the seat, remember? You drive down the road with a rifle behind the seat, you're going to shoot that deer out of season as sure as I'm alive. Some like the old fishermen back east in the Mary River. We used to go, they used to go to fish salmon with a net, you weren't allowed to. You had to supposed to fish salmon with a fly. If you're not going to fish fish with a net, you should burn the net. Shores on the live. Those nice sunsetting summer nights. When the salmon come into those pools and lay behind those rocks. You're going to take that net and you're going fishing. Sure as I'm alive. I'm not talking about this kind of a boat. I'm not talking about that kind of a ship. I'm talking about it here. Praise God. Simon Peter, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And upon this rock I will build my church in the gates of hell. Simon, son of Jones, what was thou me more than thee? Stand together with me right now in Jesus' name. 35 minutes has passed. I will need everybody in this building to lift your hands high in the name of Jesus. I will need everybody in this building. Somebody in this building today, you need to make up your mind. <clears throat> brother Cooper, you can shut Facebook down. Thank you, my brother. Everybody with hands lifted high to God right now. Hallelujah. Come on, saints of God. I need you to pray right now because God is reaching out in this place. I said God is reaching out in this place. When I give this altar call today, we come down. Hallelujah. When we come down to the front of this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. When we come down to this altar today, we need to lift our hands high to God. And we need to tell Jesus Christ, I ain't never going back fishing. Woo! Come on, church. Anybody in this building know of somebody that went back fishing? Come on. Come on, I said, anybody in this building know of a friend or a loved one that went back fishing? I do. 
I'm opening this altar right now for everybody in this building. I want everybody to come really close to the front. I don't want us to stay way over the sides. I want us to, I want everybody to step down and come right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, I need you. I want you to come in close. Come on, right in close. Hallelujah. Come on. Uh, come on, don't wait for somebody else. Step right out. Walk right down to the front. Right in close. Right in close. Don't get way off to the sides. Come on. Come on. Yeah, come on. When you get here, lift your hands to the Lord. Come on, get right in the middle. Get right in the middle. Come on. Lift your hands to God right now in Jesus' name.
are renewed. Tim, the Holy Ghost. 